Today we're going to be going over some fragrances that will leave a scent trail behind you all day and night. You can spray these on, you're going to cast a great scent trail behind you wherever you go and you don't even have to think about it. I know for me and probably for some of you guys as well, I'll take good scent trail or, or sillage over like strong projection. I would rather something you know, be closer to the skin but leave a nice trail behind me when I walk from room to room rather than project and fill up an entire room with me just standing in one spot. Oftentimes in that situation, those types of scents can be a little bit less versatile because they are so loud and strong and they're not going to be as suited for as many situations. I find these, you can get a little bit more usage out of them because they're not as in your face, but they do cast a nice trail behind you. They smell great. They smell much better in the air. It's not to say that they smell bad up close, but the real magic is when you catch a whiff of it off of somebody when they're walking or out and about. Uh, you can even test this for yourself. Spray one on your hand and instead of just burying it right to your nose, just let it come to you on its own. Waft it around. It smells much better that way. And so if you're in the same boat and that's what you're looking for, you're going to like these choices here today. I'll link them down below if you want to grab some of these for yourself. Discounters, you can get them there for great prices. But let's get things kicked off with Bulgari Man in Black. It's Grown Up Spice Bomb with a boozy kick. So you get some tobacco in here, some rum, and then of course uh, spices, you know, pepper and all of that sort of thing. But it's just a little bit more mature and so... Just that in and of itself is a great selling point. You know, that's something that a lot of people really like and respect about this one. And, you know, when you take a look at something like Spice Bomb EDT, you know, the original, it's a projection bomb. It's very strong. It has great longevity, too. And there's nothing wrong with that. But this one does a better job of leaving and, and casting more of a mellow, nice, smooth trail behind you. You know, with the spice bombs and even with this, when you get it up real close because of the spicy nature that it has, it can be a bit harsh to some. So give this one some space, spray it on. A uh, little tip for all of these here, when you want to leave that trail, spray the back of your neck as well. So do your normal routine, wherever that may be, but then hit yourself with a couple sprays on the back of the neck. That's what will help kind of, you know, push out behind you. So do that with this one. It's really going to smooth out in the air. It's going to smell amazing. And also with these, uh, the cooler temperatures will generally help to smooth something out as well. So something that might be kind of abrasive and spicy will get a little bit more smooth and tame if it's cold outside, which is coming up. You got to go for a delicious iris scent. Valentino Womo Intense is the one that I kind of chose for this video, but but Dior Homme Intense would also get the job done. Caroline Herrera Iris Empire would also do a great job. Even Gentleman Eau de Parfum would, especially Reserve Privé, would leave a really nice trail behind you for a long time. This is the one I wanted to go with. I love the leather in here. The leather iris combination is gorgeous. And it gives this one a different twist. And if you compared it to something like Dior Homme Intense, I find that the Valentino is a little bit more masculine because of that leather. It's just a different approach on a similar DNA. But again, this one leaves an amazing trail. It, this is one that isn't quite as harsh up close as maybe some of the others, uh, but it does smell considerably better in the air. You know, you just catch a nice little whiff of this one. It's enough to make you turn your head and, and you know, just want to know what it is because it has a real nice charm about it and almost a little bit of a mystery behind it when you smell it in the air. You get little nuances of like a chocolatey feel, which is also present in, you know, Dior Homme Intense and things of that nature. There's so much to love about this stuff. It leaves a great trail. It's one that you got to have. It's been hyped up a lot, but it does deserve it. Eros Parfum is up next. So, you know, when we look back at the original Eros, the EDT, and even the Eau de Parfum, again, you know, they're known for being projection beasts and also longevity. Again, really started with Eros EDT. That one was, you know, the one that was pioneering this type of scent. And, you know, when that first came out, the performance was the main selling point. It was like the benchmark for performance. It did great. Over the years, people claim reformulation and changes and that sort of thing. And so the EDT might not live up to what it did back in its prime. But the Parfum just makes it better in terms of smell. To me, it's a little bit more refined. It's a little bit more mature, but it still is Eros. So it's not a mature scent. But in comparison to the original, it is a little bit more 
well thought out, more smooth, and again, more refined. But also what they've done here, and this is just you know a byproduct of the concentration that they're using a parfum, it's less you know um, loud in the projection side of things, and it does a much better job of leaving a heavy, strong trail in the air, and that's kind of what we're looking for. And so because of that, I don't find this to be nearly as obnoxious as the EDT was back in its prime, especially because when this one was popular, everybody was wearing it. There's been quite a bit of time in between there. The blues have taken over and aquatics and everything else. And so I think Eros can easily make a comeback. You go for the Parfum, you'll have no problem wearing this one out and about, getting some amazing compliments and smelling great. Hugo Boss, The Scent, Private Accord. This is something that's not really going to reach too far outside of the community. You know, it's not like the Eros and, uh, you know, even like the Spice Bomb smelling things where they have been done a million times outside of the community, just out there in the real world. This is not that. It's a little bit more specific. It's something that not everybody's going to know about. Most people have heard of Hugo Boss, the designer brand, but when you start getting into these private accords, or I should say, when you start getting into these, the scents or the scent line, this one here, it gets a little bit more unique. And the reason why is because these have maninka fruit, which is very unique. It's got some uh, ginger, some cacao as well, a little bit chocolatey, spicy. And then the maninka fruit gives off kind of a sweet fruitiness. It's very distinct. If you smell one of these with maninka fruit, you will be able to pick up on it in every other scent within this line. You know, this is kind of the, the main line that uses that note. There aren't too many others out there doing it. There are a few, but not a lot, but it's so distinct. I always kind of say it's similar to a violet leaf in terms of being able to pick up on it because whenever violet leaf is used, you can smell it. And kind of the same thing here with Manika fruit. It smells great, very unique, kind of going back to that point. What I like about this stuff here in particular is it leaves a great trail. It smells amazing in the air, particularly. Really, really nice stuff. You catch a whiff of this, and it smells very different in a great way. Let's go for something new. Parfums de Marly Althair. Kind of a sharp-looking bottle on this one, you know? It's kind of following the muted kind of matte colors that the you know, sweeter Parfums de Marly's use, and also, I guess, Percival, which isn't sweet, but you get my idea. It's not going for the kind of clear look like Sedley, Greenly, etc. This one's got praline, vanilla, and cardamom here in this one. Very sweet, and again, you know, PDM, they do a good job at that. They have some great freshies, some great summer offerings, but when you look at a lot of what they've put out and a lot of the ones that have gotten a considerable amount of hype and buzz, they're on the sweeter end of things, some more than others. And I'll have to say, this is probably one of their, their sweeter releases, you know, at least of all the big ones, putting it up against things like Carlisle, Herod, Leighton, Leighton Exclusive, um, what else am I missing, um, Pegasus and Godolphin and so on. This is going to be sweeter. You know, it's more along the lines, I would say, of maybe something like a Hobdon in terms of the level of sweetness here. That one's like a caramel apple scent, smells just like fall. That's kind of the territory that this one gets to. Not in terms of smell, but in terms of the sweetness scale. It's pretty far out there. I've done a, a video on this one already, a standalone one. And I kind of went through and debunked some of the comparisons and also, you know, credited some of the comparisons. It's in a little bit of a similar category to something like Mercedes-Benz Club Black, very vanilla heavy. The praline is giving it a sweetness, which separates it from Club Black. But it's something that you've likely smelled before in one way or another, but it's done the Parfums de Marly twist. And that's kind of similar with a lot of their offerings. Carlisle, eh, maybe a little bit like Red Tobacco. Um, Leighton, a little bit of a mixture of a bunch of different things that are using apple and vanilla, which is a common combination. Herod, maybe smells like some of your favorite tobacco scents. The list goes on, you know, Sedley, Percival, whatever. They all have a little similar twist. That's what makes these so popular. They're kind of going after things that smell similar enough to where they're familiar in a way that will like them, but not so much so that maybe it's it's too far, if you get what I'm saying. That's my theory on why PDM is doing so well. That's not hating, you know, I, I like the brand, I like what they do, I bought this, I bought all of my PDMs, I haven't gotten any for free 
purchased all of them. I ended up getting this one off Fragrance Buy when they got it in. I paid two, a little over 200. I said it in my video, I can't remember now. Um, better than retail, but still not cheap. Uh, the point is, this one is a fantastic performer. Right out of the gate when I was testing this one out, I noticed it. This is gonna be a big time one here. And that's great when you're spending this type of money. Great longevity, but also in this instance, I found that it leaves a fantastic trail. This is the type of thing that's really going to occupy your space as you're walking. You know, people are gonna be smelling this one in the air for a long time, and that's a big bonus. Lomidiol Extreme by Guerlain is a fantastic niche level scent for around a hundred dollars. It's got some plum, some tobacco, and some almond in here. What a work of art. Really good stuff. If I had to choose, it would be my favorite within the lineup, but I really hope I never have to do that. I'm always gonna have my low mini alls. I'm never gonna sell any of them off. I don't care if they start going for thousands of dollars per bottle because they got so rare. I would never do it. And that's never gonna happen, by the way, but just as a hypothetical, I love these. I'm not gonna be getting rid of them, but uh, they're just really good. And the EDP is great. I love the new Platine Privé summary kind of version. They're all so good, but the Extreme does win for me, at least as of the filming of this video. This is my favorite one. The Plum Tobacco is fantastic, and that nice, dusty, creamy, and kind of powdery almond accord that's used within the line heavily is still here holding everything up and bringing it back together. What's great about this stuff as well is that it leaves us a fantastic trail. Not big on projection, but a nice trail behind you. Great longevity, too. Le Beau, Le Parfum. This one's got coconut, some vanilla in here. There's some pineapple and uh, let's see, some tonka bean as well. I'm trying to see what I had written down there. So I kind of describe this one as like a summer gourmand a little bit because when you smell coconut and pineapple, you know, you think of summer, you think of those summery alcoholic drinks that you might be sipping on or whatever. Just those notes have a summery smell. But then also, when you look at them, it's coconut, and both of the notes actually, but especially coconut, it has a sweeter kind of smell to it. And so, it, you know, you're kind of like, okay, am I gonna wear a, a sweet scent in the summertime? Might not always be your first choice, but if you are after a summer gourmand, this is the type of thing that works. It's kind of similar to like a Creed Virgin Island water, where it's using a lot of coconut and rum and sugar. Sounds very sweet, but it's like a summery scent. It has that theme. Kind of a similar thing with this one here. It's very sweet, you know, going back to that. That's why it does so well. Has uh, maybe in one way, almost like a suntan lotion type of smell to it. Uh, really nice stuff for a great summer evening out. But one thing's for sure, it's heavy. Like this stuff is strong. It leaves a fantastic trail. You don't have to worry about people not being able to smell you because they will when you wear this stuff. Afnon Rare Carbon is a fantastic Tom Ford Ombre Leather Clone. Ombre Leather is great. You can get it now for like the mid $100 range. You know, that's kind of what they go for and being that they're in like the signature line now. They're not private blends. Um, at least that one isn't anymore. At one point it was and it was more expensive. They're kind of making things a little bit more affordable, but still nowhere near cheap or what I would consider to be like affordable, you know, it's still expensive, just not as bad as it used to be. And some might even argue that the performance of ombre leather does not hold up to the price point that it commands. Skin chemistry plays a role. I'm not necessarily super impressed by the performance. It does fine on my skin, but at the price point, it really sometimes is hard with those higher end scents. The higher end price, you're not getting the performance that you might feel like you're paying for. This is, I think, 37 maybe $40 rare carbon, and it smells so similar to ombre leather, and it leaves a great scent trail. Definitely one to check out if you want an affordable, wearable, good-performing leather scent that smells very similar to ombre leather. We'll stick with the affordable theme here because we've kind of been all over the map with niche and designer and high-end and stuff that's more affordable. Mercedes-Benz Le Parfum. This one's got oud, it has violet leaf, amber, and vetiver in here. Interesting, because it's oudy, you know, it's a little bit sweet, heavy, spicy, woody, then it's a bit green from the violet leaf, but then it kind of goes back to being a little bit woody and almost slightly soapy from the vetiver. So it's interesting, it's all over the map. And this is something that 
doesn't really have a ton of hype compared to some of the other offerings from the brand like Club Black and things like that. Um, but this one to me is a really solid release and they're using Oud. They're being a little bit adventurous here, but it's not to the level where it's going to smell weird to people. You know, it's it's uh, kind of propped up with enough of other notes like the violet leaves, like the vetiver to where it's it's subdued and it's a lot easier to digest and take in. Uh, one thing that's for certain, it leaves this great scent trail, has great longevity, especially for the price point. Carolina Herrera 212 VIP Black is up next. Nice magnetic cap on these if you didn't know that. Uh, pretty cool. Let's see if I can do that again. Try to keep everything in focus. Pretty strong magnetic cap as well. So uh, I like this one. I really do think it's a solid release. It's got vanilla, lavender, and absinthe in here. So breaking it down sweetness from the vanilla, a bit of an aromatic feel from the lavender, and kind of a green, slightly also aromatic feel from the absinthe. So interesting. Also a little bit of a interesting texture. I need to spray it again here just to kind of break it down. And it's coming from the absinthe. You can tell it's an abnormal accord that you don't get every day all the time from especially designer releases but it's something that really makes this one stand out in a positive way. And generally speaking, you know, especially within this line here, the 212 line, these aren't known for being very exciting, you know. Fragrance enthusiasts aren't gonna be jiving with these normally, but this is one that does bring something kind of fun and unique to the table. Another thing I do wanna point out really quickly is that this one is a tester. You can see so right there on the bottom, and it comes with that awesome magnetic cap that I was showing you. That's pretty cool. I forgot that this was even a tester, but it's it's there plain as day. So if you can grab one as a tester and save some money, you get that cap as well. We'll finish things off with one final niche fragrance here from Killian Paris. It's Sacred Wood. One of my favorite niche brands. I love these. They're reasonable compared to some other niche that is only offered in 50 mLs out there. You know, these really aren't too bad. This one has sandalwood and milk as some of the main notes, which is interesting, but it's a sandalwood scent. And interestingly enough, at one point you couldn't buy this anywhere. It was very upsetting. I was building up my killing collection at that point. Couldn't get it. I think there were some on eBay floating around, but they were at prices that I wasn't willing to pay. And so I had to wait for the longest time to try this one. Just recently, or maybe not recently, recently, but within the past several months, maybe closer to a year, they're back now. You can buy them on their website retail. I think they're probably over, they are actually on discounters by now. So they're hovering in, I think the 220 to 230, $40 range, kind of standard discount or Killian price. I think they retail like 290. So you can get them again, which is nice. I love the sandalwood in here. And that's what it's all about. If you're not a fan of sandalwood, stay far away from this because that is the main accord. And that's really about it. The milk is kind of alluding to the creaminess that the sandalwood gives off. And it is indeed silky smooth to perfection. I love sandalwood. It's one of my favorite woody notes. You know, it's uh, smooth. It's not like a cedar wood where it's kind of textured and spicy sometimes, which I do really like. But this one, man, it just has such a comforting feeling about it. And it has off the wall performance. Great scent trail, great longevity. Alrighty guys, that's gonna do it for me. There's a few fragrances that leave a fantastic scent trail going behind you strong all day and night. Uh, now's the time to be shopping for fragrances if you didn't know. Now through the end of the year here, all of the sales, all the restocks are gonna be coming up that you don't wanna miss. Get on my mailing list and my texting list at the link and number down below. I promise you won't regret it. There's gonna be so much going on, so much happening, so many great rare finds coming into stock that I want you to be prepared, be ready to make some great purchases, stuff that you've maybe been hunting down forever, probably gonna be coming up. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.